Well, we want to welcome you today to our home. We're here with the Franklin family and uh, Prescott family and other families <laughs> represent a little bit. But we are complying with the government. And uh, we were just about to go on the air and I mentioned this is like trying to take a Christmas photo with the family on steroids. To dare believe that we can have church in our homes is an amazing thing. But, you know, we never dreamed that we would be sitting here, you know, not able to assemble together. I, I, I thought about that scripture. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. But I'm sad that they've said unto us, we cannot go to the house of the Lord. Right? And it's, it's so different, you know, it's so different. Um, words like uh, Words like pandemic have become the focus of the world. Words like infectious, contagious, epidemic, COVID-19, the coronavirus. These are words that we're hearing over and over and over and over again. Flatten the curve, social distancing, all of these words. And so if ever there was a time when we needed to gather our family around, and we're going to get the kids out in a minute if you'll keep watching. We do have the kids exiting at some point, but this is real life. This is what you're going through. This is what we're all going through. Uh, the, the family is there together, and it's, been a, it's basically a divine shutdown. Every sports entertainment, every distraction, everything that has been the priority, our careers, our lives has been shut down and we've, and we've been driven back to the basics of family and faith. Do you have it? If you've got family and you've got faith, you've got everything. And you say, well, I'm alone by myself. I'm, I don't have that. And I think God is allowing a lot of us to feel um, this, this social distancing so that we would have a heart of compassion and understanding for the lonely and the broken and for the hurting. And so I just want to say today that our family is here and with you and we love you and we're praying for you. I'm going to play and sing before the day is over and I'm going to bring you a message that God has given me, I believe, that is very relevant for these times. And so I want to read this because um, it's really, uh, you know, it's amazing what you begin to focus on when you get in a situation. It's kind of like buying a new car. Uh, when you buy a new car, you don't realize how many people have that car, same color, until you buy that car and then you start seeing it everywhere. And, and the word plague, which is really what we're dealing with or pestilence that we're dealing with, is connected to the communion. And we're going to get ready. So if you've got your wine or your, or your uh, juice or whatever it is you're using as a type and the cracker or the piece of bread, get it ready. Because in Proverbs, or in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13, it said, Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And here we are with my family in our house. There you are. In, with your family, in your house. And he, he, you know the story of the Passover. He said, put the blood on the house and have the people go in the house and stay in the house, quarantined under the blood. He said, if they, if they venture out from under the blood during the plague, then the plague could take them out. But if there is blood on the house... Blood on the family. The blood, we know that speaks of the, of the immaculate blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that He shed on the cross. And we are applying that blood across the world. You're watching and there in your home. And let me read it. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on your houses where you are. Listen to this. And when I see that blood... I will pass over. Judgment will pass over. Death will pass over. Disease. Are you saying that, that we're guaranteed? No. But, I, but you are guaranteed that His presence will keep you. The blood of Jesus cleanses, but it also protects. That's obvious. And then listen to this part. This is the part that you don't hear that, I, that I'm referring to. And when I see the blood, destruction will pass over you. Listen. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land. 
The plague shall not be on you to destroy you. Now, I'm going to tell you, our faith matters. That's why we say choose faith, because I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe that the power of the blood still causes the plague to, to, to shall not be on you to destroy you. It's on our nation. It's, on, it's, it's everywhere. But it can't destroy what the blood has been applied to. So I think this is beautiful. And I, I really feel that it's powerful. So I want you to take the bread in your hand. And I want you to take the cup. And the Bible does... Now listen carefully to me. The Bible does command us to examine ourselves. Never are we... Listen carefully. Never are we to take this meal casually. Never are we to take this meal, the Bible calls it, unworthily. What does that mean? That means if ever there was a time in our nation and in the world for people to repent, to say, God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. God, forgive me for any sin, all sin, wickedness, personal sin, national sin. We repent. I dare not take this meal without examining myself. This represents the blood of Jesus Christ that He shed for you. This represents His body and the stripes that He took so that you could be healed. So examine yourself. And everybody just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus. Just say it out loud, everybody. Lord Jesus, cleanse me. Forgive me. Take me back. I come before you today with my family and we release forgiveness and we release your power, the blood of the Lamb on our house, on our family. Don't let the plague destroy us. But Jesus, we receive protection through the blood of the Lamb. And Jesus said, this bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, this do in remembrance of me until I come. Take and eat. And on the same day, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood, which is shed for the remission of sin. Take drink, this do, in remembrance of me. Now this is the applying of the blood of the Passover. This is the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb. Coming on your house, coming on your children, coming on your business. I know you're worried. I know you're all coming on your career, coming on your finances, Coming on your future. Boy, I just had the Lord just in my heart say, remind them of Jeremiah 29. I know the plans I have for you. Plans of good and not evil. Not destruction. Not the end of the world. Plans of good and not evil to give you hope and to give you a future. How does that happen? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Take, drink. This is the blood on your house. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. God doesn't, he's not sitting up in heaven mad and angry. Jesus was God in skin. Jesus, the only people he ever got mad at, Jesus was religious people. The woman married five times and taken in the act of adultery. His, he came running to her, walked 26 miles, walked, not drove, walked 26 miles to a woman who was living with her lover and had been married five times just to tell her how much he loved her. He's not mad. He's not angry. He's saying, I, 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 I'm hurting because you think that money, fame, fortune, other things entertainment can somehow satisfy the gnaw on your soul that is so empty without Jesus. Drugs and alcoholism and all of these things cannot fill that void. 
that only Jesus can feel. A friend of mine sent me a text, Johnny Moore, last night. And it just blew my mind. I, I, we all know of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 in the Old Testament. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. It's, a, it's kind of an Academy Award winning verse that's famous. And, it, and you may not be able to quote it, but you've heard it and you will be familiar with it. It goes like this. If my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear them from heaven and I will heal their land. And that's exactly what America needs. It's the go-to verse in times of war, in times of crisis, in times of famine, in times of 9-11. We've been here before. We've been in situations like this before and we got through them and we're going to get through this. But that's the verse that people go to. But what, what my friend pointed out to me is, uh, you know, Second Chronicles 7 and, and 14, but nobody reads verse 13, the one before that. Where in verse 14 he says, If my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray. We all know that. But nobody notices verse 13. Listen to what it says. The conditions for which this verse is to be activated is in verse 13. So when I, have, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain and command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among the people. The very next part of that verse. Anytime you see me Allowing, I, I, number one, I don't believe the coronavirus is sent from God. I believe that God in His mercy holds back things just like He held back the Red Sea and protects us day and night from things that would overtake us as a nation and as a world because we're wicked and we are sinful and we have turned our back on God. But God in His great mercy holds back plagues, holds back disasters, holds back all kinds of pandemics and nuclear wars and acts of terrorism. The goodness of God holds, just like He held the, the, the Red Sea back and Israel walked across on dry land when they came out of Egyptian bondage. But here's what I do want you to see. There is no question in the Bible that when you see a plague, the magnitude of potential death that this, this, uh, this coronavirus has the potential of, a plague is always, in Scripture, extreme judgment. And it's not that God's sending it. He just says, okay, if that's what you want, if that's what you insist on, I did not make you like the angels in heaven who are programmed to worship me. I, I let you choose. And when God allowed this plague to come, it was extreme judgment saying. And, and the thing that got my attention was, he said, so when you see me send pestilence among the people, verse 13, here's the remedy for the plague. Here it is, verse 14. Then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sin. Isn't that beautiful? I will forgive their sin. Nothing you've done, God can't forgive. Nothing you've done, God can't pardon. Nothing that the nation has done that God can It is not too late for America. It is not too late for the world. It is not too... God is not through with you and your family and your business and your purpose. It's going, it's going to turn for the good if my people will humble themselves and pray. And he said, I'll forgive their sin... And I'll heal their land. And I believe that's exactly what God is saying. What I'm praying for, and what I believe a lot of people are praying for, is that we want, we want this disease, this contagious disease to be flattened. But maybe what would be powerful is if we would all unite now in our homes and turn from our wicked ways and create a spiritual momentum 
that I can't do by myself with my congregation and you can't do by yourself and this pastor and that pastor. But when we all come together and pray the same thing at the same time, it creates contagious prayer that creates a memorial before God. And I think the enemy has tried to flatten the church and flatten our influence and flatten our intercession. But when we all turn from our wicked ways, when we all get on our faces and say, God, help us. We need God in America again. We need God in the world again. And His name is Jesus. So let's pray together all over the world. I want us to pray earnestly, fervently. And I'm praying that it'll become a contagious prayer. They were said, maybe God is saying, no, this is a season where I don't want the church sitting together. I, time, time is of such essence now and so important and critical now. I need you dispersed. I need you scattered. And I need you in your homes first. To make sure that your children and your families are, are right with God. That they're not playing God games. That if ever there was a time that we need to seriously search our hearts and repent and turn from wickedness. God is saying, now is that time. It looks bad right now, but I promise you, God is not going to leave this thing like it is. We're about to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on our sons and our daughters to get them back to the purpose for which they were created. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy people. Mm. And God, we just pray. Let's just pray a minute, family. Those of you watching, bow your head. Maybe get out on a knee if you feel like it. Humble yourself. If my people will humble themselves and pray. And oh God, we pray for the world. We pray for the sick and the suffering. We pray for our world leaders. I pray for our president. I pray for our... Uh, Vice President, President Trump, President Pence, or Vice President Pence. I pray, God, for the doctors and the nurses that are searching desperately for solutions. I pray for those on the front line. God, give us wisdom. Give us guidance. Give us your help in the time of trouble. Lord, we repent of personal sin. We repent of personal sin and national sin. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, Lord. We turn back to you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We love you and we need you and we cry out to you. Our careers are not God. Our houses and material things are not God. Sports is not our God. Entertainment is not our God. Politics is not our God. The economy is not our God. You are our God and we turn to you with all of our heart all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. Forgive us. We humble ourselves. This is humbling. People who thought they were secure being heirs are trembling. Single mothers are afraid. Elderly people are... They, 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 we didn't see this one coming. This is humbling, God. We didn't see this. We, we thought we were secure in our little world, but... But now we recognize we need you. We need you. We look to you. We know like Jehoshaphat in the Old Testament when a problem came so great, so severe that he couldn't handle. He said, I know not what to do, but my eyes are upon you, Lord. That's where we find ourselves. So we humble ourselves and we pray. We pray for forgiveness. We pray for mercy. We pray for healing. We pray for hope. We pray for faith that overcomes our fear. We pray for salvation. And there are thousands and thousands of people watching me right now. And you don't know where you stand with God. And you don't know where you would spend eternity if you went into eternity. This is your moment. 
You don't choose when you get saved. The Bible's clear about that. You keep procrastinating someday, one day, I'm going to really get right with God. But you don't make that choice. The Bible said no man comes to the Father except the Spirit draw him. And why you're still watching this program is because this service from our home is because something's drawing you and you can't shake it. Come home. Come home. Come back to the cross. Come back to me. Just say his name right there in your room, in your, in your house. Say it out loud, Jesus. Everybody, let's just say Jesus. There's salvation in that name. There's healing in that name. There's power in that name. And I pray for all who are hospitalized and sick and infirmed and going through health issues and they're petrified they're going to catch the virus. May God's strength come to your immune system and may your health be sure. You'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name.
กเกลไรที่นุ่มมากกว่าเอ็นเทมสูงอิสราเอลดีขึ้นได้ไรลิชีช่างได้ไรอันกินนึกมัดกันสุดกันสุดวิสาเอ็มดาวกเวนีบ้าก็หึงหนึ่งก่อนจนยาวกเวนีเมาโนยดาวมิงใจมิสาเอ็มดาวกเวนี Rồi anh chỉ muốn em cạnh đây thôi, không muốn em ở bên đời, chỉ muốn em anh bên người. Oh, oh, oh. Chẳng cần nhau khi anh với em cùng một đêm trôi em ơi ta còn gì nữa đâu một cơn mưa ngày hôm qua ta còn lại gì nữa đâu ghi em. Cause I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah I'ma do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. Yo. Got a lot of shit to say, so I'ma do this every day. I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave. Six feet deep, wonder, but my body won't decay. 'Cause my messages are timeless, so they'll put 'em on display. Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty. I have a sense of urgency, a message for eternity for everyone internally. I had some people burning me, but now they fucking learn to see. I ain't the one to fuck with. Now they looking nervously, and I don't really care what you think of me respectfully. You can kick rocks if you think you're fucking better. See, I will outwork you, turn you to an enemy. Hurt you so bad that you're gonna need. I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. 'Cause I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'ma do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks. I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make.